Welcome back. That was very interesting, Bruce. It was interesting because of the amount of motion that was evoked. I mean, it was pretty abstract until she got in talking about what you saw out the window. Yes. Well, had you set that up intentionally and you knew that was going to be in that room and that was for the purpose there, or did you not enough about her history to know about the garden? Set up intentionally um, with a, the idea that, um, you know, if you make the economic argument, you get the economic answer, which mm -hmm. is, I think I'll wait mm -hmm. or I won't necessarily do it because it does require some sacrifice at some level, any philanthropic gift. However, when you make the philanthropic argument, if it's inspiring and, uh, as you saw here, uh, you can close the gift. It's very interesting. You know, in, in sales, we sometimes say the uh, buying decision is close, or the wallet is closer to the heart than the head. Exactly. I think you saw that in that, in that story as well. Thank you very much for walking through these segments. Are there any observations you'd make about the art of asking for money overall based on these scenarios and your overall experience? You have to get to know the prospect, find out what their philanthropic interests are, what suits them. There are different types of interest um, and different things that inspire people. And as you pointed out, it's, it's, a, little, it's a step at a time. Uh, the process requires, it's not a one visit close by any means. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It can take anywhere from um, a number of months to a number of years to close a, a gift. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and careful, thoughtful process uh, that's appropriate for the prospect will close the gift. Okay. Let me ask you one other question, because a, a lot of the people in our audience are advisors, and part of what we're doing is training advisors. And so I've been listening for uh, advisors coming up in the conversation where they come up and how. Uh, towards the end, I think in that final scenario, she says, uh, okay, I will talk to my attorney about this, which is a pretty good buying signal. That means she's going to do it. Do you normally talk to the attorney with the Client, or how do you how do you position yourself vis-a-vis -vis the professional advisor in scenarios like this? Uh, I have talked to attorneys uh, with the uh, donor. Um, sometimes they don't want that. Sometimes I talk to the uh, attorney privately without the donor to set up the appropriate uh, structure for the gift. So it can work in any number of those ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes the uh, donor will say that they're going to talk to their attorney as a way of, of um, finding a way to not make the mm -hmm. gift, too, which right. is their privilege if they yeah. would like to do that. Yeah, but what strikes me about it is that you are adding something in that scenario that the attorney probably would not add, which was the garden of hope and the heartfelt connection. And to the extent those two sides can come together, you would think you'd have a real win. That's true. Thank you, Bruce, and thank you all for watching our Donor Dialogue.